hello everybody happy sunday and happy new week this week is such a big week when i tuned into the energy like i just the words that came out of my mouth was like this is a big week for us so i hope you are ready for those of you who don't know me my name is abigail mensa bonsu i am a three-time best number one best-selling author i'm a multi-dimensional healer a divine embodiment coach and mentor um, and goddess guide. And so let's just dive in. Let's just dive in. So tomorrow is the winter solstice. So Monday, it is currently Sunday right now for me. Um, Monday is the winter solstice. And this one is very special. It is special because we have this conjunction between um, Jupiter. Um, let's see here. <laughs> um, let's see here. Hold on. Okay. So we have a big conjunction going on on the same day as the winter solstice. And this conjunction is between Saturn and Jupiter, big, big planets here, all in the energy of Aquarius. Hi. <laughs> so what does this mean? So we have two big major key players here, um, really helping us to expand our horizons. All in this week, like, I feel like tomorrow is more like a, um, a new year, basically. That's what it feels like to me. And it makes sense with the whole um, Aquarius energy, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, he cracks me up. He loves to like run in here when I'm doing my stuff and giggle and daddy would like run after him. So let's go back to it. Big energy this week. If you remembered last week's forecast was all about slowing down, taking it easy. And now it makes sense, right? Like last week we had the 1212 portal open up for us, which is, really bringing in, or yeah, it still is actually bringing a huge influx of light. And actually I talked about how from that point, all the way in, taking us into the new year, we are being exposed with like huge influx of light codes, activating us, healing us, rejuvenating us, re restructuring us, like, like helping us to remember, helping us to step into our purpose, helping us get clarity. Like there's so much coming through, um, but this immense amount of light being poured into us, into our world currently. And so if you, last week we talked about all about just slowing down. Like when I tuned into the energy, it was like, uh-uh, take a break chill and it made so much sense now it makes so much sense now with um how this week's energy is about it's like a new beginning but it's it's like um here's the thing what is coming through is that it's not like a a new beginning it's like okay new year new beginning it's more of a new perspective a new way of doing things gaining clarity in those areas a new way of thinking a new body a new um you know is 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 gaining a new insight on how to move forward next right and it's actually bigger than that that's just the words i could find to describe it Right. Because Aquarius is all about, you know, the, the horizon, the new horizon. What is that big picture? You know, like what is that big picture ahead of us and how can we make that happen? Aquarius is about community here. So that is definitely highlighted. Now let's bring in the planet. So Saturn, I love Saturn's energy because Saturn is like the order, the general, right? It's the it's the planet that really helps us to face our karmic stuff and really um, deal with it once and for all. Saturn is the planet that doesn't let us get away with things. 
Okay, so when, when we know we're supposed to do something and we put it aside or we shove it aside or we don't pay attention to it or we don't do it, Saturn is the one that comes in with that whip, like, hey, get back to work, right? It's the general. It comes in, it brings in the structure, discipline, right? That's Saturn's energy here. And then you, you bring Jupiter's expansive energy, you know, about luck, prosperity, but the big key here is the expansiveness of, of its energy. So it's amplifying Saturn's energy. It's amplifying Aquarius's energy, right? So if you put all those three, Saturn, Jupiter, um, and Aquarius energy, you can see that we are, like our visions are expanding in a good way, right? But before we can really step into that, that fullness of that yumminess, we need to do the work. That's where Saturn comes in. It's like, what work are you being asked to do? You need to do the work. So last week we were able to relax and just chill, right? <laughs> Preparing for this week all the way going into the new year. Because remember, we're, we're stepping into a whole new cycle here. Um, and what was it? there was something else coming in. The Aquarius age or the golden age. When I say it's a new year, we're stepping into a whole new... I mean, we're truly stepping into that fit dimension, which that's what this light codes that are pouring in this pure fit dimension and higher, you know, really bringing everybody on that same level or higher because, you know, not everybody's on fit dimensional consciousness. There's a lot of us that are actually operating on higher consciousness, um, really supporting the planet and humanity as a whole. But this is like really bringing everyone who needs to be in that fit dimension to that level plane so that we're all at least connected there, Right. But it's a new, when I said the, the solstice, this winter solstice feels like a new year, is because it is the beginning of the Aquarian age. And the Aquarian age, which is very much alike, its energy is very similar to the fifth dimension, is all about community. We are stepping away from the me and what benefits me to what benefits all of us. We've had plenty of time to really figure out the me part. And now we're bringing in that wisdom and using that to contribute to the bigger, um, the mass as a whole, the humanity as a whole. It is quite beautiful. Like there's a big, big energy we're stepping into. And that's, I'm really feeling that vastness of it, um, the expansive, expansiveness of it. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. And perhaps we won't get the bigger um, gist of it until we enter the new year, 2021. Um, but if you are as sensitive as I am, I know you feel this energy already. You know that there's something new coming in. It's not just another new year. There's something bigger. Um, we're stepping into something completely different here that will support all of us. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So that's just a little bit of the energy that we're going to be working this week, but I'm getting that is going beyond this week, right? So let's see here. Hold on. So of course, it was no surprise the goddess, the divine feminine who's here to mentor us this week is also a goddess that holds a massive energy. And I feel like we've had her come in before, or maybe that was in my moon goddess circle, but she is powerful, potent. She brings in strength, courage. She brings in really that sovereign power, tapping into that solar plexus, the sun within, illuminating, which is like all these, all these keywords are what is coming through um, this winter solstice with the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, like all of that energy mixed up, these keywords are what has, has been surfacing. So before I dive into the message, as always, let's get tuned in. So go ahead and take in a deep breath in, close your eyes. You can go ahead and place your hand on your heart. Actually put one hand on your heart, one hand on your stomach or solar plexus. And breathe into your stomach, let it expand all the way up into your lungs and then exhale, contracting your stomach. Go ahead and take in a couple of deep breaths in, 
allowing each breath to infuse all cells within your body, rejuvenating you. And imagine that each breath that you're taking in, you're taking in a breath of light. So with that said, imagine, see, sense of field, that pillar of light coming down from above, from the heart of source, all the way down through your channel. So coming through your, your crown, going through your third eye. And as it goes through all your power centers, is clearing it, is activating it, is healing it, is rejuvenating, is balancing it. So see it'll go all the way down your throat, your heart, your solar plexus, your sacral, all the way through your roots, let it go all the way down out of your root, out of your the bottom of your feet into the earth all the way down through the different layers of the earth until it reaches the heart of Mama Gaia, the crystalline heart of Mama Gaia, and there it anchors into the heart of Mama Gaia. So now you have this beautiful golden light that just dripped down from the heart of the Divine Father, went through all of your energy centers and anchored you into the crystalline heart of the Divine Mother. Go ahead and breathe here. Bring your awareness into your heart now and see that golden light begin to fill your heart space. Begin to, you can imagine your heart as like a chalice or a bowl or a cup, whatever feels good to you, but something that collects. Okay, now I love this mudra and you can even do this mudra right here and just place it right on your heart and begin to receive that golden light and see this cup Fail, begin to fill with this golden light from above until it's overflowing and allow this to just overflow and create this beautiful bubble of light around you. Spreading up all the way down, going into the earth, coming back up through your feet, connecting through your heart, doing the same thing again, creating this beautiful force of energy around you, golden force of energy around you. And I'll see a beautiful white pillar of light again from the heart of source coming down around you. And this time it's a bigger pillar of light, much bigger. And it comes all the way down all around you, goes into the earth and connects to the heart of Mother Gaia. So now you're standing into in, 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 the, in this pillar of light that connects you to source, the heart of source and the heart of Mama Gaia. And you have this beautiful golden radiance, golden bubble of light around you that stems from your heart, from the overflow of your heart. Go ahead and breathe in this space now tuned in, reconnected, open up, open up your mind to receive more of this golden light. And at this time, go ahead and invite your higher self into your heart. Invite your Holy Spirit self, Holy Spirit self into your heart and breathe. See, sense or feel your energies merge with that heart light and expand even more. And I see it as angelic wings like opening at the back of your heart, amplifying your light. Beautiful. And I want you to repeat this word, I am, I am, I know, I am. I am, I am, I know, I am. I am, I am, I know, I am. Beautiful. Really feel that in every cell of your being, vibrating through you, vibrating out into every area of your life. Breathe. Bring your awareness back into your heart space. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes, but stay in that heart space as you receive your messages for this week. So just with the meditation alone, you can feel this vastness of the energy coming in. Like, I want to hear from you. If you haven't joined, if you are on Facebook and you haven't joined my, my community yet, Moon Goddess Sacred Sanctum, go ahead and join us. And I want you to share with us. I want you to share with me how you have been feeling this energy, this light, influx of light pouring into us and how your body is working with that.
before I go into reading the messages, this another thing that's coming in with this is that every time our bodies receive that much light, we go, we can, we tend to go to, or go through like detox, um, you know, like a physical detox, not just energetic detox, like physical detox, where the light comes in and begins to push out anything that is of lower vibration, anything that is not um, in your highest and greatest good, anything that no longer vibes with you, no longer works for you, it pushes that out. So a lot of people tend to feel um, like really thirsty. Some people even get like some rashes or just weird reactions that um, have no medical um, thing. Like if you went to go check with your doctor will be like, mm, I, don't, I have no idea what that is, right? Um, some people even feel like heart palpitations, um, ringing in the ear. Now again, make sure that you check in with your doctor if, this, if these symptoms um, really affect you or um, they are, you know, like there's something that you don't usually, you know, experience, make sure you check with your doctor. Um, but it's, it's all your body's way of adjusting itself and restructuring itself. There's a major, major, major restructuring going on right now. So it's so important for you to tune into your body and support it the best you can. Listen to your body and it will tell you exactly what it needs in order to feel good. Perhaps you need more nap this week in order to adjust to all that, that light coming through. Perhaps you need to go for walks or be in nature more or go for a swim. Um, perhaps you need to drink more water. Maybe you're being called to eat more greens this week or drink more green juice this week. You know, whatever it is, pay attention to it. Tune into the wisdom of your body so you can support it. Because the more you support your body, the more your body can receive the light and more of that light coming through. It's not just a spiritual body thing here, okay? We need to learn to do this every single time. This is something that my clients are very used to because they work on that every time. Every time we're bringing in any kind of energetic um, frequencies, light codes, you have to prepare your body and take care of your body because it will go through changes, it will go through restructuring. You know, we tend to think that because it's spiritual, because it's, you know, light codes, it's all up here. Very much in here. It's all about embodying your true essence. It's all about bringing that to your physical body. So pay attention to the needs of your body. I mean, it's so important, not just for, you know, this week, but beyond, you know, like, Moving into 2021, we're going to be, you know, we, this is, this is one thing that came through is that through our process, you know, we, we went from the seven energy centers, you know, to 13 energy centers. And eventually where we're heading is that we're going to have crystalline bodies. And this is something that I've always known since I was younger. I always imagined like my brain, my skull was actually a crystal. Um, very interesting, right? Um, my spine, I've always imagined it as that. But this is where we're headed to. The Atlanteans, the Atlanteans were the same way. You know, the Lumerians were the same way. And there's a lot of the technologies currently surfacing right? It's so interesting, like where we're headed. So everything that we're experiencing right now, everything that we're being prepped for, that is because of where we're headed. You know, like we're not going to be going backwards, we're moving forward. And there's so much more as we move forward. There's so much evolution that will be occurring. And it's already, it has already begun. So with that said, let's go right into the goddess. So the divine feminine energy, who is going to be walking with us this powerful, powerful, potent, expansive week is none other than Sekhmet, the red goddess. Oh, the, the red lady, the red lady. Oh, goddess, because she is a goddess. And here is her message. So again, make sure that you stay in that heart-centered Sekhmet represents the sacred rage that keeps us protected and reminds the world of the pure strength of female power. Sekhmet is an Egyptian warrior goddess depicted with the head of a lioness and the body of a woman. The lion was considered the fiercest hunter in Egypt and a sign of protection. She is the daughter of the sun god Ra. 
The red solar disc that she wears indicates that she is a solar deity. She is known as the powerful one, the red lady, she who mauls, and the one before whom evil trembles. The ancient Egyptians held rituals at the end of war and at the beginning of each new year to tame the wrath of Sekhmet. They would play music, drink beer that was dyed with pomegranate juice, and dress all of the Sekhmet statues in red. It was believed that the inebriation would lull the goddess into a stupor and end her destruction. Sekhmet was a powerful guardian and protector of the pharaoh. She was called on during times of war and considered to be a goddess of divine retribution. So here's her message. Holy rage, sacred anger, and positive aggression. These states of being are crucial aspects of the divine feminine. So immediately what is coming in is how many of you are still, still um, ignoring the emotions that are trying to come through you because you are afraid of how angry you, 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 you will get or you're afraid of your, your anger, your, your, you're afraid of expressing it. Let's continue. It's the female power that ends wars, that brings home missing children, that seeks justice for the earth and for those who can't defend themselves. The brilliant artist and mystic William Blake relates that the voice of honest indignation is the voice of God. The feminine has for too long been disassociated from rage and anger. If we can't embody the fiery emotion of anger, it often festers or expresses itself in subversive, manipulative ways, or it leaves us anxious and frustrated. Positive aggression, acting with love on behalf of what breaks our hearts or enrages us is what allows us to become agents of change to better our lives and the world around us. Sekhmet wants us to come face to face with our true strength. Power doesn't come from passive aggressive behaviors. We don't have to fear expression. We don't have to, we don't have to fear expressing our anger directly to an institution or a person who is acting unjustly. Sekhmet wants us to see that anger is an essential emotion. And Sekhmet is the sacred call, sacred call to move that anger from pure emotion into conscious action. She wants us to act with conviction from love. She wants us to create healthy boundaries. We need so we aren't in, injured again, again. Oh, I love this one. She wants us to create healthy boundaries we need so we aren't injured again and again or so that we can free ourselves from a destructive pattern. It's time to end. So this one I'm getting like is huge for majority of you. We have a divine right to draw a sacred circle around us at all times. The protection we invoke for ourselves and others helps move us from feeling helpless to taking love and action. So here is her question to contemplate on this week. Where can I create love and boundaries in my life? Where can I create love and boundaries in my life? And here's the intention of the mantra you can work with this week. I am pure strength. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. I am pure strength. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. So go ahead and close your eyes as something that's coming through. So bring your awareness back into that beautiful circle um, of light around you. Go ahead and invoke Sekhmet's golden light around you. And I'm going to call it the divine feminine empowerment circle around you. And see that beautiful golden circle all around you creating a space for a sacred space of protection, of safety, of security for you so that you can express yourself in a loving, in the most loving way, in the most aligned way 
You can free yourself through expression. Breathe. And out. And now repeat this. I am pure strength while you're focusing on that beautiful golden circle of empowerment around you. I am pure strength. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. I am pure strength. I am pure strength. I am pure strength. And I honor my anger by giving voice to it. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. So be it. And so it is. Thank you, Sekhmet. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. You can even envision her like standing with you. You can invoke her to stand in front of you, behind you, to the left of you, to the right of you, above, below you. Just all around you. Yeah. Okay. So tune into your heart at this time and ask the question, which message is for me this week? Where do I need to focus my energy this week? One, two, or three. And once you receive your number or numbers, go ahead and open up to receive. So card number one. Where is it? There we go. So if you are drawn to card number one, and it's funny because that card is also the first card in the deck. Here is your card. And it says, the high lady of love and compassion, bringing in the energy of reverence, kindness, and consideration. So here's your message. When the high lady of love and compassion chooses to be your ally, she brings you a deep and meaningful message. She reminds you that only love is real. It is the sole unconditional and true power behind all means of manifesting out of the unseen into the material. Love's greatest creative power is ignited by the conscious action of compassion. Generosity of the heart, reverence, respect, and empathy for all living things bring you profound power to live a life of happiness and contentment. Love, compassion, and kindness to all must be the impulse behind your thoughts, feelings, and actions when your intention is to create a prosperous and abundant life. I'm going to repeat this again. Love, compassion, and kindness to all must be the impulse behind your thoughts, feelings, and actions when your intention is to create a prosperous and abundant life. Unconditional love will be returned tenfold. The High Lady also reminds you that when she chooses to be your ally, she brings you evident evidence that you are loved. All manner of synchronicities align in your favor. If your question refers to a relationship, you're required to think of the other person and inquire what is in his or her highest good. Give selflessly without asking for or expecting anything in return and let go. What is yours will come to you. Kindness always returns somehow. You will surely receive that which you give in more ways than you can imagine. When the high lady of love and compassion appears as your challenger, she gently reminds you to snap out of self-centeredness. The ego has set a sneaky trap for you. You may have forgotten that to create an abundant life, you must be conscious of how your choices impact those around you. Are you trying to manipulate others to get what you want without consideration for them? Is it possible that your good intentions are about helping too much, enabling another person to remain the same and preventing his or her growth? Sometimes it's better to let others hit rock bottom with their own suffering rather than trying to make it easier for them. Sometimes you need to be cruel to be kind. Be conscious that you aren't alone in this world. Begin to behave as if the God in all life, in every person, matters. 
Remember that the living world is a sacred community and you are a magical and important part of it. But you are not the only one who counts. The high lady of love and compassion is waiting to guide you and be your friend and ally. Think first of others and she will orchestrate your ultimate success. Think first of others and she will orchestrate your ultimate success. So the high lady of love and compassion and the key words are reverence, kindness, and consideration. So if you're drawn to card number one, here is your card for the week. Beautiful. If you're drawn to card number two, let's see here. There we go. So if you're drawn to card number two, here's your card, the keeper of the scales. And this week is all about fairness and balance. Fairness and balance. There you go. And here's your message. The law of harmony is enacted when the keeper of the scales comes to you as an ally. Align with her as the law states, making conscious choices that create balance in your life. When you do, you also magically align with the abundance of the universe and the powerful forces of synchronicity. This creates conditions and possibilities that lead to the fulfillment of your highest intention. Harmony begins with the self and then resonates outward to others. You are in harmony with yourself when you nurture yourself with love, respect, and acceptance, always fully taking responsibility for your actions. Only then can you be in harmony with others. This is because love is the central force that connects all of life and aligns you with like-minded others. Another message is restoration and the positive fair resolution in all disputes, including those involving the legal system or other important exchanges. The keeper of the scale is just and kind ally. The keeper of the scale is a just and kind ally, always making sure balance is activated on your path. Events are turning and your events are turning your life upside down and you may be dizzy and confused. Are you feeling that life is unfair for you right now? Do you believe others are getting ahead and leaving you behind? Could your ego be throwing things off? Your pride and self-centeredness may be weighing down the scales. Another message could pertain to the behavior of others throwing your life out of whack. Are you around drama that causes you to become ungrounded or caught up in it? The keeper of scales says that it is time to take a break. Do whatever is necessary to bring yourself back into balance. Let go of all people, behaviors, or conditions that bring you into disharmony. You will be very grateful when balance is restored and you are off the roller coaster. Remember that what goes around comes around. Justice will be served one way or another and harmony will be restored. I really love how um, justice and harmony plays hand in hand in this message. So if you're drawn to card number two, again, your card is the keeper of the scales. And this week is all about fairness, balance, justice, and harmony. So finding your balance, again, recognizes, recognizes what and who puts you out of balance and find a way to come back to your balance by releasing anything that puts you out of balance or, um, or what am I looking? There was a word that came in that brings you out of harmony as well. Yeah. So here you go. Card number two. If you were drawn to card number three, there we go. Gaia's Garden. And this card 
for you if you're drawn to this card this week is all about fruition abundance reaping what you sow i feel like all these cards are connected in a way with the energy of abundance it's like everything that you're doing is helping you to create that abundant, successful life that you want to create, right? I feel like it's doing that. So card number three, if you're drawn to card number three, here's your message. When Gaia appears as a challenger at first in her garden, she gently points out that you have forgotten to give back to the world. Or perhaps you've been lazy, expecting fruit to fall from the tree while you rest below its leaves. Gardens require tendon, water, and food for the soil. Everything you have within you is needed in the world, so don't underestimate the power of what you have to offer. Timely effort is called for when Gaia challenges you to help in her garden. So ask not what you will get, but what you can give. You'll be pleasantly surprised by this change of perception. I'm going to read that last part again. Ask, let's see here. Ask not what you will get, but what you can give. Be careful not to procrastinate too much or the window of your current opportunity might close. Yet even if you do miss this one, as long as you're willing to help in the garden, you will most certainly see another one. In Gaia's garden, you have everything you need to make your dreams come true. There is no shortage of anything, and you're constantly reminded of the law of supply. Gaia is the infinite spirit manifest in all tangible things. She represents the abundance of nature. When she comes to you as an ally, she invites you to partake of all the blessings of life. There will always be enough for everyone. Success comes to you from the fruits of your intentions and all is well with the world as a result. This is also a sign to remind you to give thanks and maintain an attitude of humility and gratitude as your greatest good now manifests for you. Gaia's gifts are sweeter when you share them with others. Gaia's gifts are sweeter when you share them with others. So the other thing that's coming in with this card immediately, um, and I actually have a meditation on this specifically. I'll find a link and post it um, in the description for this video, for this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. But the garden that she was, she's referring to is actually our own heart garden. Go in within your heart and begin to, and I walk you through a meditation that actually get you in there and you, you can begin to remove weeds and tend to the soil and water stuff and plant new seeds. You know, like every time you set an intention, it's a great place to go and plant the seeds in your garden, your heart garden. So I'll, I'll put that link also with the description. So if you're interested in doing that, especially if you're drawn to this card, this will be a great meditation for you to do this week to really connect you to, to Gaia's garden. Um, that is already within you. It all begins within and then it spreads out outward, right? Um, what powerful messages that we received this week, right? I feel like they're all connected. So if you find yourself connected to multiple cards this week, it's totally, um, it feels right. Like it, it's meant to be, right? But what powerful messages and what powerful um, energies we're working with from, from this point forward, right? Again, tomorrow, like I want you to find some time to acknowledge this Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, as well as the winter solstice. A simple ritual you can do is just light in a candle, light a candle in your home and breathe and speak to your own higher self, speak to the divine of your heart's greatest desires, your heart's greatest intentions. Surrender it. I love this ritual. You know, it's very simple and yet very potent. And don't forget to take care of your body this week. Listen to the wisdom of your body and help your body by supporting it so that it can continue to receive as much light this week as it can. So thank you so much. Thank you for receiving this week's Goddess Energy Forecast.
If you have been enjoying these forecasts, go ahead and share it with anyone that you know who might enjoy this as well. Um, and if you would like to work with me, um, I have one-on-one -on -one packages. Go ahead and go to my website, moongoddessacademy.com, and check out ways that you can work with me. You can also check out the Moon Goddess um, store or the shop where I have meditations and you know a lot of goodies there that you can purchase and kind of do on your own. Um, but yeah, so much blessings to you from my heart to yours, and have an amazing, amazing, amazing week. Happy holidays. Bye, everyone.